Uh, go to anchor.fm slash the CU podcast if you want to send us some voice messages. We appreciate them. Please keep them short and sweet. And we love com- you. Comments ab- about uh, Ian's eyeglasses are looking stylish. I, I do like those glasses, Ian. Oh, thank you. I love the, the white little inner brim on there. Or my hair are always welcome. Those comments. They're over a year old. Hey, guys. Alex here. Uh, I've been going over some of your uh, older videos for nostalgia's sake, and I've got a couple of questions for you guys, a couple of pretty meaningless questions. But anyways, Pat, how much of a Highlander encyclopedia are you out of character? And Ian, do you still have that My Sure Nui poster from the old Luna store? Thanks, guys. No, I don't have the My Sure Nui poster. That was uh, that was Treg's, and I think that is still hanging up somewhere. It was the King of Fighters Maximum Impact poster. Uh, I love Highlander. I do not have an encyclopedic knowledge, but I know enough to get through a conversation with some of the women that used to be on the uh, alt.tv slash dot, dot Highlander news forum that was on in the 90s. The 90s. I, I could keep up with them, but I that's all it was. It was all, all women on that site. Uh, and it was like 16-year-old Pat chatting about the latest episode that came out. It was it was fun times. Um, shout out to anyone out there all, uh, still on alt.tv dot Highlander, by the way. <laughs> anyway, um, I know enough about what happens in the seasons. I know enough of the characters. I know enough about the movies, but I'm not an encyclopedic knowledge. No. Hey, Pat. Hey, Ian. This is Matt from Rochester, New York again. Uh, you've mentioned this con a few times before, uh, the Retro Game Con in Syracuse, New York. Mm-hmm. I'm just wondering, are you guys ever planned to, to come back to it, um, at least when they have it? Because I know it's been canceled the last couple of years because of the pandemic. Um, it's bad height. I think I harassed you about Eli Manning there. I apologize for that. You harassed me about my, my, my buddy Eli. Um, hope all is well. Talk to you guys later. Oh, yeah. Retro Game Con is run great by uh, Pat Milligan up there. It's, 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 it's hard to get to. There's no direct flight, but I love going to Syracuse. Never been there. If you uh, want to see me there, tell them that you uh, want me there. I got a friendly there. I got, they got decent uh, all you can eat. Tell yeah. them you want me there and I will we'll, go. We'll get you there next year, hopefully. Uh, next. Hey, Ian and Pat, this is Charles from Deerfield Beach, Florida, the sweatiest part of South Florida. Mm. Just a quick question. Uh, what? what retro <laughs> game, like ColecoVision, Atari 2600, or uh, retro you know, PC game, would you like to see brought ported to mobile? Uh, personally, what? I would like to see a lot of the classic Atari Activision titles like Frostbite, or hero uh, and games like that uh, brought over. Uh, thanks a lot. I never heard anyone say they wanted a retro game ported to mobile ever. Yeah, to mobile? I don't know. I don't I mean, actively want for anything mobile. No. Um, but I have said it a bunch of times. Uh, I would love, I mean, a, a portable, sure, because I think Atari games are, are, are great for portable gaming. Um, I really, really uh, want to see, I know I've already mentioned it about the Evercade, I want to see an Activision Atari I want Barnstorming. I want Pitfall. I want uh, Stampede. Yeah, I, can... want, I want all the good ones. That's what I want to see. It's probably not worth their time, honestly. Activision Blizzard, like, oh, whatever. Oh, Who sure. Cares? But, like, th- yeah, th- it would make some money. Hey, Pat. Hey, this is Josh again. Hey, Josh. If you guys were offering a million bucks, who would you fight in a celebrity boxing match? Pat, I could definitely see you fighting Tommy Tallarico oh, okay. or that fucking uh, kid Billy from your childhood. I'd take Pat in two rounds, knockout easily. Thanks. Billy was always bigger than me because he was like a year and a half older. And when you're a kid, that's like he he, he, he taught. He, yeah, he bullied me sometimes when he got pissed. When his parents would yell at him, he would take it out of me. Whatever. I was the smallest boy in the block. I said that. That's not why I'm rough and tough. Now, um, who would I fight for a million? I don't need money. If I want to fight someone, I don't need money. I'm, I'm you know, I'm a pit bull with dimples. I'm, I'm, if I'm going to fight someone, I'm gonna fight. I don't need money to do it. I mean, if you're going to give me money, sure. Uh, you know, Paulie D, celebrity boxing. <laughs> there uh, you go. Throw some money at me. How about you, Ian? Uh, let me just make sure it's okay. Matt Walsh. Matt Walsh, to fight Matt Walsh. I fucking hate Matt Walsh. <laughs> oh, he's one of those like political he's, commentators. He's a fucking piece of shit. Guys. Yeah, I can't stand him. Okay, next one. Hey, Pat and Ian, this is Duffy from Louisville, Kentucky. Louisville. I'm curious, Ooh. asking the both of you, uh, what's your funniest story from a convention? Thanks. F- funniest story while we're at a convention. My hmm. funniest story at a convention was kind of walking in on Jack's peeing. <laughs> On who? Jax. P. Oh, Jax. Jax. I thought you meant multiple Woo-wee! people named Jax. That feels better. And you embarrass. You embarrass poor Jax. By the way, uh, Matt Walsh. Yes, the commentator, not the comedian. Not 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 the good Matt Walsh. Oh, there is a Matt Walsh comedian. Uh, um, that would uh, that would uh, suck. Yeah. That would suck if your name was the same as some asshole. Yeah, would be bad. That'd be bad. Uh, fun. I don't know. I don't. I don't have like an 
laugh out loud moment. Then again, like conventions, a lot of it blurs. You talk to so many people over a weekend. So I, that's a tough one. Let me, let me think about that. I'll come back to that. Hey, Pat and Ian. This is Ray Lynn again from Ontario, Canada. Here's a question for both of you. You're about to start the completely unnecessary convention, and each of you get two guests each you can bring. Oh, Jesus. But the only thing is, not, they can't be anyone you're friends with or acquainted with. Oh. What guests are you bringing? They don't have to be in the video game industry either. Anything goes. Keep up the great work. Thanks. I know Patrick Stewart then. I don't know. <laughs> I want Pat Stewart at a convention. Uh, I don't know. Um, huh, it's a tough one. Brian Eno and Jeff Bridges. Jeff, oh, okay. Jeff Bridges would be fun. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, give me, give me Van Dam then. No, there, fine, good enough. Hopefully, hopefully he doesn't ask for any uh, extracurricular activity stuff in his green room. You know, <laughs> I don't think he's doing that stuff anymore. <laughs> he used a lot of coke back in the day. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Who didn't though? Hey, Pat and Ian, Adam here from Ypsilanti, Michigan. Question Ypsilanti. for Ian: With major life changes in play after leaving Luna, could there be little Ians running around the Ferguson Manor? Why do people ask about kids with us sometimes? I don't understand that. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't mind. I think it's. I think that is just one of those questions that people always, always ask. Uh, no, Vonnie and I are absolutely not interested in having kids. Why have kids when you can have cats, as my sister says? Yeah, one of the first like important discussions we ever had was like, how do you feel about kids? No? No? Good. I think that's something that needs to be discussed pretty fucking early on in a relationship. Because I see it tear apart a lot of relationships that... 10 years on. Oh really? Like ten, you, it comes. You gotta hash out before you get married. Yeah, exactly. That's not something you can put off. No, I know. Holy but shit! People do. That's like bigger than getting married. People put off everything because they want to fucking stick their dick in something. That that's what guys do. They get. I, I see all these fucking dudes get married because they think just have sex. I don't know what it is. I think sex fucking fucks up people's brains. Oh yeah, we're, it, we're, I, uh, yeah as men, yeah, we're, we're I mean, demons. I'm just talking as a dude because I'm a I'm a dude. But uh, women, men loving other men, women loving other women, whatever. People get together because they just want. They don't think about the longevity of the situation. That's, people are short fucking sighted. Sex is great, but if that's your primary reason to get into a relationship with someone, that's not. I mean, that's obviously what, historically what it was, though. Oh, you do one man, one woman, and you can't have sex outside your marriage if you're Catholic, and it's like that creates a lot of bad shit. Long term, as Ian said, including babies that no one wants. People, hi, Pat. hi Ian, Paul from Detroit. Hi, uh, just wondering what your workout routines are like, and if you'd ever consider running a uh, Patreon workout session. <laughs> no, <laughs> nope. Uh, and um, these days, these days, uh, I, I I do curls. Get those, get, get those drinks back. Yep, that's about all I'm doing. I actually thought there was a time. When after I moved here, I thought about g going for yoga certification. There was like a six month period. I'm like, I like yoga. I do it every week. It would be fun to do that. Um, but it's like 150, 200 hours. And it, once I got it, it'd be like, what the fuck do you do with it? The yoga instructors don't make jack shit unless you have your own place. And it's like, it's a cool thing. I mean, uh, you know, at the time, I'm not saying I do it, but it's, yeah, it, it is nice to be a male yoga instructor when it's 95% women, but that's not reason to get into it. Um, uh, what do I do? I work out. I, I, resistance bands are great. They're 25, 30 bucks. You can do 80 to 90% of what you, you can do at a gym with resistance bands instead of going to a gym and potentially hurting yourself with big weights and being around people and whatever. Uh, so get, get yourself some resistance bands. Do yoga at least once a week. I have a heavy bag as well, more for cardio. And that's what I do. I work out. I only work out like three days a week, maybe four days. I'm getting older. And you honestly, most people, you don't need to work out more than three days a week. That's, that's fine. Um, we got, we got lives. Uh, next. Hey, Pat and Ian. This is Mike from Jersey. Love Mike? the show. This question is for Pat. I was wondering who your main influences are for, uh, from radio in terms of your podcast voice. Whenever I hear the podcast and you're speaking, it kind of reminds me of the Opie and Anthony show for some reason. I was wondering if uh, you were ever a fan of that show or Howard or any <laughs> other talk radio in the uh, New York metropolitan area. Okay. Um, again, love the show and speak to you. Bye. Oh, I was a huge Open Anthony fan growing up in my, in my late teens, early 20s, and probably until into mid 20s when I went to XM. A huge fan uh, of them, but I don't do a radio voice. This is my natural speaking voice. This isn't a, this isn't a come on. I don't, I don't, I don't get up there and go, hey, that was a nice show. No, this is my, this is my voice. But they didn't do voices. Howard doesn't do a radio voice. I, I don't do a radio he, voice. I, I think he just meant your oh, voice. Oh, my, oh, like how I present myself. Yes. Oh, okay. I present. This is me. I don't 
this is me. I, th I, this is the same as me having a conversation with Ian at Luna for two hours. This is how I am. I'm not vastly different outside the podcast. Maybe Ian, I'm not like a, like a different person. No, I think we both we put up we put we up both a, turn on yeah, when, when it's podcast time. But yeah. I am not I am not much different. I mean, if anything, I'm just quieter. I don't talk this much <laughs> when I'm yeah. recording. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, what's your voice? That's what I, I meant literally. But no, this is who I am. Maybe some people are surprised about that, but no, I don't. I don't have like a fucking YouTube persona that that makes me kind of sick to my not sick to my stomach. But do what you do do out there, YouTubers. But I couldn't do that. Well, I do a couple more. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> hey Pat. Hey Ian. Jeff Dickinson here, Dallas, Texas. Hey Jeff. Question. Now I'm watching a video that just went live today about the Meagle and television. Oh. Now I know it's a sore subject for everybody, sore. me included. But they're releasing these physical editions in four pack bundles of seven uh, seventy nine ninety nine, or you get an eight pack bundle for one hundred forty nine ninety nine. Here's my question: Do you think people are going to be buying these since they are labeled as limited edition collectors, uh, bo uh, box games? Jeff, I, I can answer that for you. They haven't been. They, no, they, they they sold all ninety nine percent of them in the first three days. They sold supposedly about ten thousand. Uh, overall copies of the 50,000 yeah, allotment, uh, the and math, that's about what's going to sell. The math is something like, yeah, 10,000 individual uh, copies out of 50,000 individual copies. We looked into that in terms of sets sold. I can't remember what that was. It's like 2,500 sets or two to 3,000 yeah. sets. So some are eight, some are four. Um, and uh, it was all within the first three days. Yeah, that's it. And that's about... We, we bring it up for 6,000 pre-orders was reaffirmed. Tommy lied about there being 12,000 pre-orders and came after us. 6,000 pre-orders of the console in in uh, a year and a half, over a year and a half of getting pre-orders, 6,000. Oh yeah, it was in that it was in that An article. article. Yeah. yeah, it was reaffirmed. He came after us saying, oh, we did over, we did like 12,000. 600 was a number thrown around one point. No matter what you say, 6,000 fucking pre-orders is not a sustainable ecosystem. Even if you quadruple that after the, its release, we'll say you get to 30,000. 50,000, you're not, that's not sustainable. I think the Apple Pippin had like a 30,000 to 50,000 install base. And you, you the Ouya had, of, a, the Ouya had 100,000 or so, right? That didn't survive. Right. I'm just saying, you see yeah. stuff with 30,000 install bases, yeah. never. That, that's a full, that's a complete flop. That's like, well, like you can't find the games for it and it's worth a ton of money because, well, there you go. So keep on your Mika Prioris. Okay. One last one. We got, we got, uh, we got someone checking in. So. Posted a picture of the Amico AC adapter on the Intellivision Twitter. Nobody seemed impressed, even though the Amico logo was on the adapter. And I gotta tell you, this is getting exhausting. I mean, I don't know what hoops I have to jump through to win you people over. This is the most thankless generation I've ever seen in my life. And were you too impressed? Of course not. Nothing impresses you. Especially Ian, man. Life just bores the shit out of him. You guys don't even appreciate the Super Mario Brothers movie. And that is a slap in the face to the Italian community. Pat, you're a disgrace to all of us. What? And I have had enough of your friends and the hurtful things they say because of how jealous you are of my accomplishments. <sighs> Gonna be in Boston this weekend. So if you want to try the Amico, come on down. We'd love to have you. Bye now. <laughs> Real quick, I, I said I'm a disgrace to uh, Italians. I heard a nasty, nasty rumor that I really honestly don't hope is true, Tommy. I heard that you had pizza at one of the ev events in Boston this past weekend, and my source told me it was Domino's you got while you were in Boston. Couldn't even ask around for the good pizza. Boston is probably East Coast. A, a Boston's like a top probably six pizza city, and you couldn't get real pizza. Nasty rumor, Tommy. I I want you to prove me wrong. I I, I will. I, I all in all seriousness, I will say thank you, Tommy. For prove me wrong. It, show me the box of real uh, Boston pizza that you got from a real pizzeria, not Domino's. Seriously, from one Thai American other. That's slanderous, and I hope <laughs> that that wasn't true. 